So the next item of your tax return that we can get preparing now is medical expenses. You'll see on the attached spreadsheet, it might be a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. The spreadsheet's built in order to accommodate somebody that has two health plans and still incurs an expense out of pocket. So we often see this when one taxpayer has a plan, the second taxpayer has a plan, the claim goes through both and you still have an expense afterwards. If you don't have a health plan or you only have one, just eliminate the, the columns on the spreadsheet that aren't applicable to you. So a tip in order to help you with your medical expenses is you do have the ability to go to your health carriers and request for a report of all the claims you've put through. You can also go to your pharmacy and ask for a report of all of the claims you have submitted through a pharmacy. And so that will help you in organizing what your health claims are. And then you're going to have dental, vision, and those kinds of areas where it's usually a larger one-off receipt. Let's get into some of the areas where the medical expenses are most commonly misprepared. The first one is, is that you can claim your medical expenses on either spouse's tax return. We don't have to put one spouse um, expenses on theirs and then the other spouses on their tax return. It's best to combine them and put them on one taxpayer. The other thing that's also um, misprepared in a lot of cases is it typically makes sense for the lower income earner to be claiming the medical expense. And this is because there's a threshold that you must pay out of your pocket before you can claim medical expenses on your tax return. So the lower income earner would have a lower threshold. Now, we wouldn't want to do that if that individual is not paying any provincial tax. We may then shift it over to the higher income earner, but that's up to us to assess what tax return the medical expenses should be claimed on. That leads to a common question I get is, if you've provided medical expenses, why don't I see it on my tax return? And that's in fact the exact reason, is that you wouldn't have paid enough out of your pocket to hit that minimum threshold. And a lot of people go through a lot of work to prepare these medical spreadsheets just to realize that they can't claim. So if you know approximately where you fall and it's individual per case because of the threshold is a percentage of income. So it's not a flat rate that we'd be able to tell all taxpayers. But once you have a general rule on how much you can claim based on your income, then you would have a good idea if you should even bother or take the time to prepare your medical expense spreadsheet. One of the other misprepared areas is with practitioners. One of the biggest ones is massage. You cannot claim massage expenses in all provinces across Canada. We've listed in the details the different provinces that registered massage therapists are able to claim and the provinces where we are not able to claim. That is one of the areas where files are misprepared on a lot of cases. If you are in one of those provinces where you can't claim massage therapy, please withhold them from submitting or including them in the tally of your medical expenses. The next I is more of a tip. Most people don't know that you can claim your medical expenses in any 12 more month period ending in the current tax year. So what often can happen is last year you may not have been over the threshold, this year you may not be over the threshold, but if you were heavy with medical expenses at the end of the prior year and heavy at the beginning of the next tax year, we can combine those together in order to have a claimable amount on your tax return. So it's important to always review last year's, this year's, and maybe what you have upcoming in the following year. If you've got a orthodontist bill coming up, we may want to withhold claiming in the current tax year and actually pull it forward to next year. So it's important to really understand if you've got a larger one-off or a unique expense that you are going through. If you have individual, just smaller amounts that you're claiming, it usually doesn't make sense to shift between years. It's just when we have those larger expenses where we can actually save you some tax. The next area is attendant care or care facilities. These are often filed incorrectly. If you have these large expenses for yourself, a spouse, or maybe a parent that you're helping, please just send us all the receipts. We would need to know what the situation is, what type of care, and we will help assess whether the amount is claimable and how to claim it on your tax return. And lastly, travel for medical. You can claim travel for medical if you satisfy the CRA requirements. The first one is, is that you can't get the medical care close to your home. 
This often happens with people that live in smaller towns and have to travel into a larger center in order to get the medical care. You also have to be traveling more than 40 kilometers to qualify, take a direct route, and it also has to be reasonable that you're getting care that you're traveling to complete. What this means is that you can't head over to Mexico to get your teeth cleaned and think that you can claim that expense. So please use the attached spreadsheet in order to prepare your medical expenses. Once prepared, please upload it to the tax portal, send an email to service at precedencewealth.com and we will get going on your medical expense preparation.